2023. My name is Christoph Ebert. I'm today with uh, Teng Hui from uh, Costal China. And um, let me briefly introduce myself and then we will also introduce to our guest. So I'm Managing Director of Vector Consulting Services, responsible for the global consulting activities in Vector and very glad to host this um, Vector Forum, which is now a new format. One hour, one topic, one person, intensive Q&A, and it will also be recorded. Uh, so welcome also to those who listen to the recorded format. Of course, who is live is in a better shape because you can directly ask questions and that gives you a better, um, let's say, impact uh, to influence uh, the topics being asked. But we proceed and I'm glad to have here today Mr. Hui Cheng and um, you probably can briefly introduce yourself. Say hello to everybody. You're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. Okay. Yeah, thanks Dr. Christoph. Yeah, really glad to have the chance to share my experience here. Uh, so, to all the audience, yeah, guten Tag, good morning, and good evening. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully, it's you are come from all over the world. It's really my pleasure to yeah share my experience in China. And uh, my name is Chen Hui. Yeah, I came from coastal China. Uh, my main responsibility is yeah responsible for all the software, the software platform, the software um, process, the software uh, all the software uh, fr uh, frameworks are done yeah, in my side. Yeah. So now uh, in Costa, we extend the, the software also with the platform. Yeah. So with not only this platform is not only including the software itself, but also hardware and the validations. Yeah. We want to use a platform strategy to deal with most of the customers. Yeah. And uh, in China, uh, we running nearly 200 projects per year. It's a huge number of the projects. Yeah. And uh, now these several years, really a lot of um, Changes, yeah, a lot of evolutions in software side has come from, yeah, more and more OEM is think about, yeah, software is the, the key values of the OEMs. They can bring a lot of new use experience for the vehicles, yeah. So now more different uh, models for the development is coming. So I wanted to share, yeah, what our experience in this area and hope we can exchange the experience with each other in the Q&A sessions. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Shisha. And uh, I, I realize we have many uh, uh, visitors today from China. So, Ni Hao to everybody who comes uh, from China for our Vector Forum today. And let me briefly introduce. So, the topic this year is converging system. What we mean with this is what you see also with the two puzzle pieces that is, we have an increasing amount of systems which are not anymore either embedded or somewhere in cloud but it's a connection it's a connectivity embedded systems are connected to cloud or to the edge and the cloud the classic it is connected to the product to give additional value to the product a good example is what we know from our smartphone where we have an increasing amount of services which should just utilize by making updates, same as for cars, for medical, for transport. And this is exactly our focus this year. So I will briefly give you an overview into the uh, motivation, the content, also the agenda, and then also uh, come afterwards back and um, help hopefully go further. Where do we go from here? Vector is about almost 4,000 persons, uh, 1 billion uh, sales and active globally. And uh, we have been done this Vector Forum now for uh, many years in very different uh, topics, but always covering our four major domains in the portfolio, which is trust, technology, transformation and trainings. And from 2007, when we had the first Vector Forum towards today, we covered many interesting topics, but we see recently a growing amount of focus as uh, we just heard from Mr. Cheng that software is the value. This is what we just also heard from Costal and it is 
as we were all aware in the uh, past years, uh, when we go back into 20 years ago, software is eating the world. That was the slogan. It's now in this eating. A few things on the Vector Forum. As I said, one hour, one topic, one Q&A, interaction on this topic with our speaker. So this is the value of the new format on a weekly basis. It's always at one o'clock Central European summertime. So you can also join from Asia to North America easily and therefore not have to stay for a half a full day into one single meeting. What you want to use is um, Microsoft Teams application, uh, not the browser, makes the experience a bit better. Um, we have a chat window. You can easily see that in Teams. Uh, there's a button for the chat and you would simply go to this button and you can then later on <clears throat> put your questions. You can also make a voting on these questions so that we, when you like an existing question, you just give a vote on this question so that uh, if there's many votes, this is what we use as a kind of a selection or filter criteria, which question to ask. And we will afterwards send you a quiz, which is voluntary, but those who want to join, you can uh, get some prizes like trainings or books. And in the case of uh, some uh, fall down of Microsoft Teams, which as you might remember, we had in the uh, beginning of this year when Microsoft Worldwide had a severe problem with their cloud services, we will switch into WebEx. In this case, watch your email so that when we send an update link, you know it and we will then use it so that you can uh, directly benefit um, to continue where we are. The symbols show a few things which we should be aware in all meetings, notably make over sure wherever you are that you know the way out because that is the first and most important risk mitigation. We will stay in the hour, that's the time. You will get a PDF afterwards. There will be the recording in the cloud in YouTube, in our YouTube channel. You can ask the questions via the chat and don't forget also to have the coffee so that you can really actively listen to what we are doing. We had a survey at the year end as we do every year and the amazing part was that competence is seen both short-term and long-term challenge. Amazing because the previous pictures always had quality, complexity, innovation on this upper right corner. Now for the first time ever, it's competence. We all know why after this pandemic uh, lockdown, many of the engineers have decided to mentally calm down a little bit. It's really difficult to activate people to get back into office, to collaborate, to innovate together. And this has slowed down many companies and many of us currently experiment with new hybrid ways of learning, but we have to manage because several studies indicate creativity is going down if people work from home. There are other advantages like ecologic footprint is, is definitely smaller, but also the creativity is smaller. And that means there's an impact on innovation. There's an impact on the legacy, which is preserved. That means complexity will grow. Quality issues because you cannot anymore talk to your colleagues easily. And that is there are impacts from this lack of competence, which will start the vicious circle. So. Competence growth is important. That's also why we have the Vector Forum. And convergence has become a mega trend. If we go backwards, we had in the past years different names for this, like Fourth Industrial Revolution, Industry 4.0, ACES, which is autonomy, convergence or connectivity, ecology and services. And we had been writing an article together with Accenture some years ago, and the message is still valid. It's about to innovate the business because it's a mixed business, it's an adaptive system. So there's so many changes. Focus on value, deliver value. That's the software business. Think global. That is why we have today China, coastal China, because the world is not anymore one development center. It's a global supply chain. Deliver quality because it's very difficult to get back 
I was yesterday on a medical conference, a very big medical conference, and I present about cybersecurity. And one important finding, I mean, we did some studies and we looked into recent cases was one company had a security vulnerability in a pacemaker software. And they had to make a call back. And of course, with a medical device, this does not mean that this implant is changed, but it needs a software update. And the software update has to be done in the hospital. So 500,000 people had to go to the hospital to get a software update. This is product IT. We have to focus on quality. We have to make sure that we protect our systems. Cybersecurity is the major enemy which we have in our software business model. And as I mentioned, grow the competencies. The classic disciplines are disappearing. When I started my professional life, I started in telecommunication. Today, nobody knows anymore what it is because it has merged with IT. The same will happen with many other industries. What is important is that those who know computer science also learn about embedded, and those who know electrical engineering know about computer science. We have to grow our competences. Within this vector forum, we have several presentations today. Mr. Cheng from Coastal China and I'm really glad uh, to have Coastal China here. And one thing which we want to emphasize in this presentation is the software innovation in China. I mean, often I heard in the past years, and I've been to China since the 90s very often, China is copying. But this is not any more true. China is really a hub of innovation. And we will learn from Mr. Cheng about what are the experiences, what are the best practices of a company which is globally active, which is Costal, and what kind of learnings can we share? And when we do that, maybe we start with a survey and the survey will now be active in our teams. So what you do is you see in the chat window the survey and you would just go there and uh, make a yes or no. So you should see something which is called globally distributed development brings many additional challenges. Is it a yes? Then you push your mouse on the yes, otherwise it's a no. In the meantime, let me continue with uh, three major observations which we have. It's about innovation and productivity is important in such a global distributed development. Each additional location, also home office, reduce productivity and creativity. We need additional mechanisms. We need trainings. We need sharing. We need push-pull mechanisms in order for knowledge. And the classic idea with wikis or Teams channels, this is certainly a beginning, but not the answer. Ensure consistency with your pros with your tool chain so the learning curve in the project is smaller. Tools like CMMI or ASPI is a good framework, but you also need tool support. Tool support ensures that rules are followed. And finally, agree responsibilities. That is, for instance, interface agreements in the supply chain, and not only for the deliverables, but also for the updates because there will be updates, software, but also security patches, et cetera. And this is where we bring our experiences. So in the meantime, we also see already a result from the many people who are today in this uh, survey. So let me just um, copy, uh, paste this uh, somewhere in the presentation and we can also watch it. So here we are. So it's about 97% say yes, brings many new challenges, and a few say no. We know already know all that. And I think that's now the time when we will learn from Costal about what is best practice and yep, what can we learn. And uh, this is then Mr. Cheng. Uh, you can start here on. Uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Uh, Christoph. Yeah. 
it's uh, my pleasure to share the like, experience. Yeah. So, uh, in my presentation, yeah, I have three uh, phases. Yeah. So the first one, yeah, let me to have a, a brief introduce of the Costa. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to know the details. Yeah. What the Costa do and what's the scope of today's software innovation. We are not a supplier for autonomous driving. We are also not a supplier for connected vehicles. Yeah. But we are focused on the uh, body domain and also the EV charging. These two parts, yeah. So what we talk, what we talk, the software innovation is focused on these two domains. Uh, and also, I will share, yeah. Uh, what we are involved in nearly all the local OEMs, yeah, Chinese local OEMs, and uh, we are clearly know the detailed e architectures and the technical trend, yeah. Uh, we get all this information and share to all the audience. Uh, I hope, yeah, both of us can know better about, uh, yeah, lo local OEMs. And uh, also with these solutions and the technical trend, yeah, how what Costa doing, yeah, in the last several years, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, and we have some issues, maybe we have some advantages, but anyway, it's like it's the try of Costa solution, yeah, yeah, it's not maybe not the best, not the worst, but yeah, we are trying. So first, introduce the, the Costa, yeah, Costa Group is a German com company. A uh, family owned, yeah, now it's already more than 110 years, yeah, so with four generations. And uh, uh, since 1970, yeah, we started to globalizations. And uh, in 1995, we started in China, and uh, now it's already nearly yeah, more than 30 years, and uh, more than uh, uh, 4,000 employees is working in Costa. Yeah. So totally, uh, last year, we have about two point. 8 billion euros yeah, for revenue. And uh, in China, the revenue is about 1.4. Yeah. So nearly half of the revenues is, yeah, it's, it's done in coast Asia, including China, uh, US, uh, China, Japan, uh, Korean, India, yeah, these areas. So uh, our product mainly yeah, focuses on the body domains. Yeah. And uh, also internally, we separate this product it's two types. Yeah, one is energy. Yeah, focus on the uh, uh, electric vehicle onboard charging DC DC converter, and also yeah, the interface between the charging and charging stations and the vehicles. Yeah, and uh, another part for energy is also yeah, all the body domains like down control unit, smart access, uh, including the um, UWB. Yeah, wide um, uh, ultra band. Yeah, and uh, uh, Kelly's Go system, BCM body control unit, yeah, yeah, like some, and also MFC, yeah, Bluetooth, like this one, and also, yeah, the tailgate. Another side, yeah, we are, we call it empathy, which is, yeah, anything can be touched by the drivers and all the users, like, uh, yeah, string corner modules, yeah, uh, with string angle sensor, shift by wire, all the uh, shift the gears, yeah, roof module, yeah, all the, uh, all the displays with small, uh, uh, small displays of the surface. Yeah. So this is my uh, our focus. Yeah. Nearly yeah, all the parts which driver can touch, we are involved. Yeah. So uh, about the new e architectures. Uh, yeah, we all know. Yeah, in recent several years. Yeah. So the new e architecture is became a really a hot word. Yeah. So everyone is talk about the. Domain controller, the no zonal controller, yeah. So all this is a start from Tesla, yeah. So we know when the Model Three is released, yeah. yeah we are talking about all the autonomous driving, yeah. All the, the domain controller, but actually, yeah. What we analysis is that, yeah. Uh, the domain controller, or we can say, yeah, the big zonal controller, yeah. The, the concept is a little bit different with. The, now the Chinese local or, or local OEMs, their architecture, they are based on this domain, but they are, have a lot of innovations based on uh, on the Tesla. Yeah, they also have their own concepts. Yeah. So, uh, so now in China, yeah, totally we summarized. We have two approach to centralized. Yeah, with the domain or role controller. Yeah, so a lot of uh, OEMs. So they still using the classical. Yeah, e architecture, but yeah, for the significant um, uh, parts like autonomous driving, like yeah, uh, navigation systems, like 
they create the uh, domain controllers, yeah, to make the, all the, the experience with the driver much better than before, yeah. Uh, car can really drive, uh, yeah, uh, with the driver assistance, the drivers can really relax, yeah, somehow, yeah. And uh, all the connected vehicles are focused on the uh, uh, T-Box, the links with the, uh, the cloud, yeah, a lot of new features, the software will be downloaded from the cloud yeah, servers. And uh, is that okay? It's really, yeah, the performance, yeah, the, the using experience are much better than before with the domain controller, yeah. So it's really, this is the, the technical trend, yeah, for every car, because we know, yeah, if we combi combine both domain controller and the traditional E vehicles, yeah, E architectures, that means most of the original ECUs are kept, but we add additional domain controller yeah, for the high performance, uh, high performance computing system yeah, with the domain controllers. This will yeah, make the price of the car very high, like the first OEMs in China, who is really released really a high performance car, like Neo, yeah, like uh, uh, also yeah, the, uh, Li Xiang, yeah. Most of the cars are sold more than yeah, uh, 50,000 euros yeah, or yeah, 500,000 MB, yeah, which is really expensive. It's not the normal car for all the, the, all the, the, uh, all the persons. Yeah. Most of the case in China, uh, what we analyze is that yeah, the basic seller is less than, uh, less than 30,000 euros, like this way. So, of course, the performance is good, but the price is, is different, yeah. It's quite much, much higher than the traditional cars. And then what's the next step? Should our car is really with the high price, with such a high price with the luxury cars? Okay, then the second uh, architecture is coming. Yeah? So okay, we are not only yeah, improve the, the using experience of the um, the user, the drivers, yeah, but we also want to yeah, yeah, make the cost down, yeah. Make it a little bit, yeah. So, what's the possibility to make the cost down? Can we merge a lot of traditional ECUs together, or can we reduce a lot of ECUs? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, not to reduce, yeah, but we merge really a lot of traditional ECUs as a small zone controller. Yeah, this actually will reduce the the e architecture complexity and also reduce, yeah. The, the vehicles compare with the domain controller. So then we can see the clear idea. Yeah. So we make a, uh, a survey for all the local OEMs. Yeah, of course, uh, we also have the, have the corporations with them. So before uh, 2020, nearly all the brand of local OEM is using the traditional E architectures. Yeah. Yeah, so it's quite clear. Yeah. And uh, since 2020, yeah, the first domain controller uh, e architecture, yeah, as released by Great Wall, and then you can see in 2021, nearly yeah, most of the um, uh, OEMs is starting with the domain controller, but some of them like uh, BYD, like uh, Huawei, yeah, uh, Huawei's cooperation with a lot of yeah, local suppliers, yeah, um, like Dongfeng, like uh, Cherry, yeah, they are providing the new e architectures, yeah, here. I mean, this is not the means all the car lines is directly going to the jumping into the domain controller or the zone controller, but their first car line who started with the zone controllers, yeah, e architectures, yeah. So you can say, yeah, now BYD and the Huawei started to use the um, zone controller e architectures, yeah. And then you can say later, yeah, nearly all the, the OEMs were finally, yeah, in. 2025, they will go to the zone controllers. Yeah. So uh, we put the typical E architectures for the all Chinese OEMs. Like it looks like this way. Yeah. We have uh, actually still keep the high performance domain controller, but merge a lot of uh, yeah ECUs, traditional ECUs as a uh, zone controller or what we say is a small zone controllers. Yeah. Totally, uh, how much is used is uh, needed to uh, to keep it. Yeah, it's the uh, concept is different from the, the uh, different OEMs, but generally, uh, the idea is that 
keep one or two or maximum three, yeah, high performance computing system inside the, yeah for the autonomous driving or for the for the uh, cockpit or for the uh, for the uh, entertainment. And for all the others, we are starting to merge. Yeah, and uh, yeah, different uh, OEMs have their different solutions here. So, uh, from our point of view, yeah. Also, we have some analysis with the with Toyota. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks yeah similar, but yeah, the name the naming is a little bit different. Yeah, for the ECUs, yeah. They just yeah based on the zones, but they are much more numbers. Yeah, the numbers is much more than uh, what we showed just before. Yeah. So finally, yeah, the whole architecture, the main idea based on the vehicle is that yeah, we'd like to yeah integrate more and more yeah its use uh, together and then make more and more software, uh, especially for the logical control software should be integrated in a zone controller or the high performance computing system um, uh, domain controller or even the cloud yeah in the, in the cloud so uh, we are switching yeah now we today we're still here we have the, the zone controllers yeah we have this things but step by step we need to move to our basic service to applications to the, the to the zone controllers yeah and the uh, additional things I wanted to share with with uh, yeah uh, with our our audi audience yeah. So not only one OEMs or not only tier ones, also not only tier twos yeah yeah or software suppliers are doing that yeah. Uh, the whole industry also started going like this way. So we have the CAAM. Which the those is similar with the VDA in Germany. Yeah? They are organized the most of the tier one and uh, also OEM, yeah, to to have a standard organizations named uh, SDV, yeah, software defined vehicle. Yeah. Uh, so uh, another uh, organization which for standardization is also yeah, we named AutoSemo, which is yeah, another software suppliers, another uh, software basic software suppliers. Also, yeah, application software supplies, outsourcing software supplies, with the OEMs, with the tier ones, are set up a, a organization named AutoSemo. Uh, so you can see in SDV, yeah, in this alliance, uh, it's already have uh, several events and uh, a lot of standardized, yeah, API was released, yeah, based on the discussion of all these OEMs. You can see, yeah, here, it's not only Chinese local. OEM, but also yeah, the supplier, the, the suppliers yeah, from international like a lot of German uh, Germany company, uh, Germany suppliers, a lot of uh, China local suppliers, yeah, and uh, a lot of OEMs yeah, are there yeah. So totally, it's already more than sixty yeah automotive companies be involved yeah, and. So, and then for AutoSemo, you can see here, yeah, all the big software suppliers are there uh, in China. Like and the new soft is the AutoSAS Tech supplier, similar like a, like a vector, and also, yeah, a lot of OEMs, yeah, are, are there. So, so generally, yeah, with generally with these uh, activities, yeah, more and more. Um, and companies, uh, suppliers, OEMs are involved in the software defined vehicle. Yeah, and uh, this will be a technical trend, and also it's already be a technical trend, and uh, we'll have more and more OEMs start to using this standardized uh, interface to defend the, uh, a lot of applications. Yeah, it looks very similar like the IT industry. Yeah, when a lot of interface are standardized, then yeah, a lot of innovations will become yeah a lot of changes will become yeah so from our from our perspective yeah from our summaries yeah in body domain yeah uh, because yeah at the beginning we mentioned yeah we are focused on the body domains yeah so in the body domains uh, this will be the uh, this will be the official uh, not official sorry 
this will be yeah, the general architectures for the zone control like that. It still keep the classic autosa. They still keep yeah, they still keep another um, smart sensor of the actuators outside link uh, while the can to link with the zone controller. Yeah, but the zone controller itself will be yeah service oriented architectures, and then with the Ethernet, with yeah the high band. Uh, uh, high band communication, data communications, yeah, and uh, yeah, integrated a lot of uh, yeah, uh, logic, a lot of functions together to try to reduce the number of the ECUs, yeah, and uh, the software definitely, yeah, from the sensor to actuator, step by step by step, move to the zone controllers, and then part of them are move to the, the central computing system. So we list the possible features, which could be, yeah, could be yeah, integrated by the zona controllers. And uh, yeah, uh, we have uh, already a lot of RFQs and a lot of uh, produce is, is nominated yeah, with these solutions. Yeah, yeah, finally, yeah, the summary of the, of the uh, e new EE architecture, what's the news, yeah? So we have uh, uh, the investigations yeah, in a different OEM. Which modules will be integrated? Which modules will be not? Yeah, yeah. This is done. I think uh, uh, last year, in the middle of the last year. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, it's still not clear. Yeah, which is used still available, which is not. But the fusion and the uh, yeah, merging is definitely yeah the trend. Yeah, so the ECU numbers will be reduced. Yeah, the complexity of the ECUs will be increased. And uh, yeah, the logical function will be shifted to easy use. Yeah, this is clear. Yeah, and uh, especially the other things will be yeah, the software-oriented architecture, which will cause a lot of uh, innovation or innovation yeah, for the software will be de definitely used from really a lot of easy use. Yeah, and uh, more important is that our traditional. Uh, Functional distribution is not available anymore. So all the functions, all the all the uh, functionalities can be integrated in a different ECUs. Really special uh, cases, like even like the uh, gear shift can be integrated with the digital key systems like UWB, yeah? and uh, also yeah, uh, tailgate also can be integrated with uh, the digital key systems with the UWB, with the Bluetooth, yeah, and the city memories are also can, yeah, integrated with a lot of uh, roof modules, city memories, string column modules can be integrated in our driver uh, uh, monitoring systems, yeah. So you can say, yeah, uh, you can't delegate, yeah, which ECUs should be taken, uh, which functionalities, it's already changed, yeah. It's not like, yeah, what we need to prove. If you are the supplier of BCM, what, what should be the functionalities in? If you are the supplier of power tailgate, what should be the technical use? Now, they, you can, they can put all the possible uh, functions in your path. Yeah. You should be extended as many as possible. So what we do, yeah, how we deal with that? Yeah. So, uh, with the clear architecture changes, yeah, uh, we think about yeah how we can yeah adapt our product to the new e architecture, how we can move it quickly, yeah. What what should be yeah the challenges of the new e architectures? So with the the solutions, yeah. So we are discussing um, a lot of OEMs, yeah. Um, we are really a good corporate. We did a lot of OEMs. Our idea is that, yeah, because it's the innovation of the software, we are not sit and waiting for the FQ for the uh, nomination uh, for the new project. Yeah, but we directly go to the OEM side to discuss, yeah, what's your expectations? Yeah, what we should do for you? Yeah, yeah. Even we are we are win a lot of nomination for traditional 
classical e architectures like ECUs, yeah. But we are also willing to discuss with you to make yeah the like evolution of the how the whole vehicles, yeah. So we do together, yeah, with the OEMs for the feature identification use cases, yeah, and also defined the the, the communication metrics, yeah, based on the, the service oriented architecture. This normally should be done by the the OEMs, but we do together with them. They yeah, try to uh, quickly support them, and them, yeah, in the in the uh, ECU side or in the zone controller side, yeah, we uh, identify the functions and also the distributions, yeah. Which part of the function should be done by this ECU or this zone controller? Which part should be yeah distributed in the others, yeah? After the assignment of the of the of the functionalities uh, and them, we started to define the software uh, oriented architecture, the service, uh, identify the service metrics, yeah, and also all the interfaces, yeah. With that one, we updated uh, the software architecture and uh, them to discussing, yeah, what we should do, yeah, in the developer side. It's really we still can use the traditional method to deal with the 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 new. Uh, architectures or the new uh, zone controllers, or we should ha also have innovations, or also have adapt to our customer demands, yeah, to make it quickly, yeah. So based on the on, the, on the, this informations, we defined the, the new e architectures, yeah, and uh, we also reform a lot internally to make uh, our approach can quickly um, provide the the service, uh, the software. Based on the software, the service oriented architecture method. Yeah. Yeah, with this one, yeah. Um, also, yeah, start we to set up based on the, the, the service oriented architecture, yeah, service oriented functionalities. We started to yeah, set up our servers, our test benches, our our test, all the test cases, yeah, and then also, yeah. Yeah, do together with the work test uh, with our OEMs. Yeah, with this approach, yeah, yeah, we are we can quickly know the demand of our customer and also can quickly adapt our development method and organizations to this new e e architectures. So, and also we during the during the development, yeah, during the, the FQs, yeah, we have a lot of different yeah demand for the development. Like OEM is really yeah. Defend the responsibilities like a lot of uh, things. A lot of OEMs want to develop the application software themselves, and also wanted to integrate it themselves. And uh, later, the hardware and the basic software is done by Costa. For some others, they only wanted to develop the applications, but you need to integrate it uh, for them. Yeah, you develop the hardware software, and uh, you integrate it for them. But also vice versa. Yeah, so. Yeah, OEM wanted to develop uh, the hardware and the basis of it because they think with this approach they can yeah really reduce the cost and, and also make sure yeah the cost optimizations can be done by themselves and the tier one is develop the application yeah and also even more yeah they can have many tier ones in one product yeah develop a different part of the software and the hardware is provided by OEM it looks yeah. The many many possibilities is there. It's yeah, you should be ready for a hardware supplier or software supplier or uh, ECU supplier. Yeah, depends on the OEMs. So what we do is that yeah, we wanted to yeah, reanalyze our all functionalities. Yeah, and uh, we also separate our functionalities not based on the ECUs but based on the features. Yeah, for every feature, yeah, we have. Uh, Identify the hardware blocks, the software blocks, and also yeah, the stand interface. Yeah, make it standardized. No matter it's service oriented or not. Yeah, we can use this a uh, capsule. Yeah, we can break it down to another capsules. Yeah, with the small yeah, functionalities. Yeah, within that, if what we get is the traditional e architectures, we will use the the uh, classical auto start to yeah get to call all these parts yeah to make the function running. But if it's um service oriented architecture, then we will use the standard APIs to yeah make 
all these part running yeah, based on the, the, the atomic APIs and the, all applications can yeah, call all these functions or can um, make the service available yeah, for all the applications. So with all that, with, with this approach, we can quickly adapt, quickly adapt, yeah. And also for hardware, yeah, we take the concept, we <laughs> take a similar concept with the vector tools, yeah. Like this is the test bench, yeah. You what you expect to extension, then you put another additional card inside, yeah. So why not even the ECU can do like this way? We separate another small box, yeah. When the new function is coming, we just put the new box. And what we do is that we make sure guarantee. Make a guarantee, yeah. The Mac controller have like, enough performance, yeah. All the 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 board the board have the hardware have the good performance, and then we can quickly achieve the different uh, requirement for the customer based on the SOA or not, yeah. So we also using yeah, uh, feature assets basis to manage the, all these bases, yeah. We create another capsule here, and then we manage it as a, a feature-based assets, yeah. And then when operation coming, this first approach is that they started to pick all the features which is are already available in a basis, yeah. And then can merge these features inside the applications, yeah. Can make the, the whole product um, um, developed faster, yeah. And of course, yeah, backgroundly, we need to build more and more based on this, uh, yeah. Technical domain engineering, so yeah, we create another more and more capsules and put it to the, the feature assets here. So, and then we use the the method to manage all the features. Yeah, we have the feature catalogs. Yeah, and then we are mapping these these features in one of the product memory uh, families uh, with the right tools. We can configure. Yeah, all the features. Yeah, yeah based on this catalog to generate yeah the stand stand the uh, the, the sub subset of the product families yeah so this is yeah the main uh, idea I wanted to share with you yeah with this approach yeah I think we really achieve uh, we can develop faster and uh, can deliver faster and the quality is also still still good yeah and uh, with this approach, we also can uh, really have the flexible to shifting uh, the functions from one ECU to another ECU, and also can shifting our product from the traditional um, EE architecture to the new EE architectures. Also, we can possibilities there to shift the new EE architecture products to traditional EE architectures. Yeah. So this is yeah uh, uh, what I wanted to share with all of you yeah. and thanks a lot for your time for your patience yeah and uh, yeah if you have any questions yeah we can uh, have a discussion in the q and a sessions thanks a lot thank you uh Mr. Cheng, and I'm uh, glad to have got this uh, very big overview. We still have uh, some minutes left for questions, so I might remind all uh, you have the chat window to enter your questions. If you go to a specific question and you just go with the mouse over the question, you see some uh, reaction uh, symbols. Uh, if you get this uh, thumb up, uh, that would be the voting approach, just in case somebody wants to vote. Now, let me just start uh, since I see some votes. Um, yeah, maybe we start with the architecture part. Does Costal provide own cloud services or how do you cooperate uh, or integrate with OEM? Yeah, uh, Costal do not provide uh, our own cloud service to customer, but we always work together with customer to, yeah, to distribute our part of the functionality in a cloud server to integrate. We provide the parts and the OEMs is integrated these parts in their cloud server. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, related to the architecture, there was this um, topic about uh, service oriented architecture and the development mm -hmm. model. So is the software architecture depicted, uh, that is a software architecture which you show, um, the, the one at the vehicle level or is it more ECU level a picture? Uh, this one? Um, you need to share again. Okay, a moment. 
You missed this one? I, I don't think so. If you go down, um, you had this, uh, no, up, uh, sorry, you had the uh, oh. software so, uh, development um, more. Uh, so I, I presumably this one, I, I assume so. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, there was no page number given. Yeah, so. Yeah, uh, so here, um, yeah. for this one, actually it's the, the developer process is the vehicle level. Yeah, because, you know, software uh, service oriented architecture is quite new. It's not only new to tier one, but also new to the to the, all the OEMs. So we need to identify another features which can, could be, yeah, uh, used uh, as a service based. Yeah, so we, working together with the OEMs with this approach. Okay, that means when you talk about system engineering, you mean more than only the subsystem, you really talk also about uh, the whole vehicle system. Yeah, but, but uh, only the body. What we do is only the body. Yeah, because we are, uh, class, uh, for the classical architecture, we are developing nearly all the uh, body related issues. So mm. uh, we also follow for this SOA, basically, we also yeah, have OEMs to develop this uh, mm -hmm. in a vehicle level. Okay. Um, they have some questions on process and tool. Do you have a mm -hmm. consistent uh, development environment and um, let's say consist continuous X, uh, PLM, ALM uh, for Costal, or do you adjust it according to the needs of uh, OEM so that you would have different um, tools in use? Uh, currently in Costa, we have a, a already a really good developed continuous integration yeah, servers there. We can integrate it or not. Yeah, but uh, to be honest, yeah, for this con uh, continuous integration server, uh, we still not really yeah, started to adjust, uh, to adapt to the service oriented, even in this time, but we are working perfectly for a lot of things like uh, yeah, Mishra checking, like uh, integrations with yeah with the models but not a whole zone controller okay okay and you have uh, same tools uh, for all what you do develop or you uh, have different tools depending on the oem uh we use the same tools uh, yeah for all the oems if they are not yeah okay. directly asking to use the specific tools hmm. yeah so we have the tools started from the Requirement analysis a link with our continuing integrations, yeah, to uh, unit test, yeah, and to integration test and the two system test. We have, uh, yeah, put all these uh, activities together in uh, our continuing integrations. Okay, so that is you. We have a reference um, tool and process uh, which you use in Costal for all the development to, uh, for consistency, and you connect with the OEMs um, um, what they demand. Yeah. Um, for global development team, I've seen one question, which is um, what, what kind of specific challenges do you see with respect to distributed development? Yeah, uh, from my, uh, actually, to be honest, yeah, we, we serve a lot. <laughs> yeah, uh, so the main thing is that, yeah, uh, it's quite clear. We can define the requirements clearly. We can define the responsibility clearly. Mm. The main thing is that when you start to integrate it, all these software components as a whole is use. So still there are a lot of misunderstandings with each other. It's not really easy to clearly describe and define everything in detail. So when started to uh, integration, we'll find that they are we have slightly different understandings of the details and the tools are not working properly. And the, yeah, the working environment, the development environment have slightly different. This caused a lot of issues and also caused a lot of problems. Yeah. And, and what are you doing to reduce the impact of these problems? Yeah, uh, two, two solutions. One is that we started to create a virtual environment to integrate the application model, application software or models together. Yeah. Uh, we use, we, we are trying two tools. Yeah. One is yeah, from Vector, yeah, yeah the, the virtual target. Yeah. We already started trying to look really 
a good uh, good chance yeah to really have the opportunity to to work in environment uh, working virtually and uh, make the software more stable than before yeah and uh, also we are integrated our MATLAB models if we are using model based design to integrate it in the MATLAB internally and to test them more deeply yeah and then integrated in, in in the ECUs this looks helpful and the second is that we First, on, uh, we try to unify the most of the tools. We can't say all the tools, but we try to unify the, all the tools and the develop environment as much as possible. Yeah, make the, the, the difference of the different areas, the different teams, yeah, uh, less and less. That's also quite helpful. Mm. Okay, so you have uh, different approaches in order to better integrate um, the teams and um, ensure the, the consistency and understanding. Yeah. Um, okay, I have a last question which relates to this one, which is, um, uh, do you allocate teams according to, let's say, features in an agile approach, or do you more have a functional split, or is it a mix? Uh, actually, it's a mix, yeah. At mm. the beginning, we always use in agile, uh, solutions to develop yeah, because uh, yeah, yeah you know uh, for at least new software innovation really a lot of this is new and that nobody is clearly know what we expect so uh, what, what our, our customer expect so we always faster develop uh, 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 demonstrations to them and uh, to check if there what is expect or not so we try to approve yeah the, we try to approve the requirements as quick as possible to make mm -hmm. yeah to make sure yeah requirement is really yeah what uh, what we expect and after that we started to yeah develop the, based on the function group we can say yeah so we put most of the similar functions or similar features together as a group yeah and then we started to uh, develop it yeah and test it and then finally integrated it so we use both solutions mm -hmm. Okay, um, I think uh, we come to the end of this part and I will briefly give an outlook then. Thanks again also for um, answering the questions. We addressed all the questions which we have seen in the uh, chat. Thank you very much for this share, giving, sharing your experience and also giving us the insight. Yeah. And then we summarize. So where do we go from here? So we have this topic of convergence, which certainly will not really be addressed with one perspective. We need different perspectives. Today we had the perspective of integrating a global supply chain with Costal, which um, I think we learned a lot about uh, what you answered with respect to architecture, the, the V abstraction, how to integrate, how to achieve commonality with the uh, different um, tools and process and that is also why I want to come back to the topics we have to innovate uh, the business to focus on value we have seen this value focus because you show what you do together with OEM global thinking you showed us from the very beginning Costal is a true global company quality focus you uh, uh, showed uh, not only the technology aspects but also how you um, use different processes like uh, continuous integration in order to um, improve the quality and uh, the mitigation of the challenges. This was exactly about learning and growing the competence. So you nicely address this uh, five topics which we had uh, there previously. And I want again to thank you uh, for this presentation, Mr. Cheng, uh, on the automotive innovations done by Costal China. Next time we will have presentation from Siemens on a different application domain medical and we'll learn about um, the um, benefits from digitalization and AI in the medical domain and uh, up to then I recommend you stay tuned. We also have planned Vector Form 24 which will be in a similar layout by uh, May, June 24, you can already find a registration site and then also um, uh, register. And for now, thank you again for the audience for 
listening for asking this uh, good questions. I would like to thank you uh, to all those who uh, benefit from the recording. You cannot ask the questions, but you can get back to us with the uh, link which I provide www.vector.com slash consulting. And above all, I want to thank our today speaker, uh, Mr. Cheng Hui or Hui Cheng, depending with America or the China approach for name. Um, but uh, it was very good presentation about what Costal is doing in China and how to align in such an international setup. Thank you very much. And all of you, all the best with your global development, with your distributed development, and uh, we stay in touch and uh, will share more experiences. Thank you. Thanks a lot.